So I'm a social worker by background. I, um, I trained in the 90s to be a social worker and I worked in uh, local authority children's services for about 16 years um, before I decided I wanted a career in research. Well, before I decided I would pursue a career in research, I'd wanted a career in research for a long period of time. So what I'm going to hopefully do in the next few minutes is think about um, my, my journey, my pathway to, to where I've ended up today, um, thinking about that in terms of the last 12 years, but also then with my research development advisor hat on to think about what current me would, um, what journey I would have if I'd started that journey now and what the differences are. Um, and given that it's, it's one of the, the themes of the, of the conference, to also think about the role of, of key people within that. So as I say, uh, 12 years ago, I decided that I would uh, pursue a research career. Um, I didn't know what that meant. Um, I didn't know anybody that had done it particularly. Um, and within social care, there, I, I didn't see people doing what I wanted to do. So there was only one route, as far as I could see, which was that you went to a HEI and you went and did a PhD. Um, thankfully, I knew what a PhD was. Um, my wife had done one several years previously. But I work with lots of people who actually go, I, I think I want to do a PhD. What's that involve? So one of the first things was working out what that meant and how I was going to go about doing it. Um, I had no research training, no research knowledge, really, other than a than a very dodgy undergraduate degree dissertation that I'd done in, the, in 1996. Um, so I applied for a 1 plus 3 ESRC uh, PhD, uh, which would include a, a master's with methods training. I didn't get that. Um, I, I uh, wasn't successful. Um, and one of the first key people, I guess, would be my partner, because we decided that we would pay for me to go and do the master's and pay for my fees. Uh, having got that, I then got a plus three uh, PhD uh, in Cardiff University and, and completed that. And I then have been able to, through, through a range of factors, been able to sustain a, a research career for the last six years, uh, full time in, in Cascade. Um, But there's been a number of factors that have affected that, I guess, in terms of, of, of how that's worked out for me. Some of that is luck, uh, and I'm well aware that some of that is luck. Um, but in terms of having that career, one of the first things is that I didn't have the type of, of services and, and, and opportunities that are now being developed by the sort of work that Reb talked about. Yeah, the, this idea of research mindedness, of being able to do uh, research whilst I was working. So I left. I, I, I completely left my role in a local authority and I did a PhD full time because that was, as far as I could see, was the only way of doing it. Hopefully we're now in a position where that isn't the case. Uh, so there is much more, or becoming much more opportunity for people to undertake research minded research training, to get involved in action research projects, to do communities of inquiry, to do evaluations of the, so the services that they work in, which weren't available to me, as far as I could see, 12 years ago. And I don't think the, the local authority that I worked in was unusual. I think a lot of the local authorities within England and Wales didn't have that research culture or those research opportunities. Um, There are, 12 years ago, me, had there were significant barriers to being able to do what I wanted to do. As far as I could see, the only two routes to doing, having a research career was either doing a professional doctorate, um, which would enable me to carry on working, but they're self-funded in the main, so I would have had to have found the money to do that, or to get a funded PhD. But even that, at that point, meant that I would have been, um, was, funded by a stipend, which was roughly half of the salary that I was on. So I then had three years of living on a lot less money in order to pursue this career. Again, we'll come on to the fact that that hopefully now isn't the case because of what's being done. Um, 
But there is also that thing about, as Reb touched on, that thing about knowledge and understanding of what, what's available. What, if I want to do this, where do I go? Who do I speak to? What does it mean? How does it all fit together? Um, and that was one of my overriding experiences from 12 years ago. If I think about the role that I now have as a research development advisor um, and what would happen with for me now, um, I think the new personal awards programs that are being set up will have quite a significant impact on people like me um, coming through. Um, as I said, I, I funded myself, or my partner and I funded me through um, the Social Science Research Methods Masters in Cardiff. People now would be able to apply for a research training award, which would not only pay their fees to do that master's level training, but it would also buy them out of their time to go and do that. There are problems with that, as we've already touched on. Um, Organisations are massively overstretched, and you know, the reality is they're not going to be thrilled with the idea of releasing people to go and do master's training. But the opportunities are there, and hopefully working with local authorities will be able to uh, get people freed up to go and do that. As I say, there, was, uh, there were no opportunities to do research where I was. But now, with things like the Emerging Researcher Awards, you, people will be able to do some of that sort of pre-doctoral dipping your toe in the water, finding out what it's about, learning skills, building networks that I couldn't do. I just had to go from a standing start and say, I shall apply for a PhD, and that's me done. Um, that now isn't the case. And it is, but it is that career progression. It's, it's not just having bits at the front that enable people to do this, but what happens as you move forward. The vast majority of um, social care research is done in HEIs. And as again, as has already been touched on, there is all the, the, the stuff around precarious employment and you're only in a job as long as you can bring in money to keep yourself in a job. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that, that going back to that, that going through a PhD, we now have salary replacement costs um, in PhD funding, which wasn't available to me at the time, which will mass massively, it, if we think back to the presentation earlier, in terms of barriers to accessing things, the fact that somebody who has a mortgage, has kids, can go and do a PhD and be paid what they currently are to do it is amazing and I think will make a huge difference in Wales to what happens. I think the infrastructure is also really important and going back to this idea of people, um, for the last seven years I've worked in Cascade. When I started in Cascade it was six people. Um, it's now over 40 people. It's one of the biggest social care research centres in the UK, possibly in Europe. Um, they are my people. They are people who are doing what I'm doing. Um, they're peers who I get support from. They're experienced academics who mentor me. The fact that I've been able to, I'm just about coming to the end of being broadly an early career researcher. The fact that I've been able to, A, keep myself in a job full time for six years, seven years, um, and also go from an ESRC fellow, postdoctoral fellowship to my own first PI grant to an NIHR grant at over sort of five, six hundred thousand pounds, which isn't a lot in health terms, but in social care terms is massive because we virtually had no money from NIHR. Um, that, in a lot of respects, is down to the support I got from having people around me. And there is something around the new care centre and CADA and Cascade and having critical masses of people. And it is that thing about, if I can see it, I can be it. Lots of people now know about Cascade in social care, and they can see people like me, who've gone from a career in, in frontline services to doing research and go, I could do that. And there's now the stepping stones to enable them to do that. So this is the last slide, because I'm getting flushed off one minute, so. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of how this all fits together, for me, there is this thing about that early, early piece around research-mindedness and giving people basic skills around how this all works and 
opportunities to, to dip a toe in the water. There's then this middle bit, which is the pre and pre-doctoral and doctoral. So things like the emerging researcher awards, which would allow somebody to do a pilot study or think through how they might do a PhD study. And then onward from that is those steps to becoming an independent researcher and undertaking independent research as a PI. And again, there are awards through the research development, um, uh, through the personal awards that will enable people to get a fellowship, to think about what they want to do after a fellowship and move that on. And I think it's certainly in the context of social care, those things are critical now to building up a, a, a volume of people who are able to do research. Uh, the last slide I have is um, not a slide, it's a virtual presenter, I think, if it works. So um, this last piece is just a very short video by uh, Professor Jonathan Scarfield. Um, he is one of the key people that I talked about. He was my PhD mentor, he was my PhD supervisor. He's also helped me get some of the grants that I've got through, through commenting on drafts and things. Uh, he is also the specialty lead for social care, along with uh, Dr. Nina Maxwell. Um, he is the first one we've had, which again is another block in that development. Is you know, There's over 30 specialty leads for various bits of health. He is the first one we've ever had for social care, um, and I think it's an important role. Hello, Shumai Jonathan Schofield to be. Athro Gwaith Cymdathasol, Prifos Gwylchadydd, Professor of Social Work at Cardiff University and the Interim Director of the Centre for Adult Social Care Research, acronym CARE, and uh, until recently the Deputy Director of the Children's Social Care Research and Development Centre, Cascade. So I've been asked to say a few words about how I got involved in research. I guess I could start with when I did my MA in Social Work and had to do a dissertation which involved a piece of empirical research. I enjoyed doing that uh, very much, uh, found it very uh, rewarding, um, got good feedback, got a good mark and decided therefore to try and, and publish it in some form. I got encouragement in that from my dissertation supervisor and, and personal tutor on the on the programme and, and a little bit of uh, advice and support with looking at a draft of, of, of an article. So I published an article um, which was a short condensed form of the dissertation and there was at the time a monograph series specifically designed really for social work students work called Social Work Monographs and, and I published it pretty much as it was through that. Unfortunately that route's not open anymore but the, to turn a piece of dissertation work into a journal article is absolutely open to people and many most dissertation supervisors will be very happy to support practitioners in, in doing that. I then went on to work, so I was a practitioner uh, in the probation service back in the days when you qualified as a social worker to become a probation officer, shows my age. I uh, was still interested in research and within a couple of years I came across uh, an attachment to a university. It was called a Cropwood Fellowship. It was only a short term attachment, that one to the um, Cambridge University Department of Criminology, where you worked with an academic to do a piece of research. I, 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 I did that and that was helping me on my, my, my road to becoming a researcher. Such things do still exist now. Uh, in particular, we in the Cascade Research Centre offer a researcher in practice scheme without any, any money changing hands. It's it's a way for a practitioner to be formally attached to that to the research centre and have some academic support in starting off some research. That's still open to people. I then applied for a, at the time a university post which um, also expected me to do a PhD alongside a, a teaching load. Uh, I guess the probably the best equivalent now in 2023 would be the Health and Care Research Wales a salary doctorate scheme, which has just begun. Great opportunity to, you know, keep your practitioner salary and do a piece of research over a few years. There are also PhD studentships um, which do involve going going down to a kind of student stipend, but they are funded at a level that you know you can live. Uh, I would very much recommend to do a PhD as the, the entry into a research career because you, you learn so much uh, from that 
process of, of doing your your own in-depth study with with good support. I think then when I became a, an academic, when I, I carried on working in, in the university and, and after a few years, I wanted some help to expand my methodological skills and I guess the rigor of increase the rigor of my search and, uh, and increase improve the ambition of my research. So what I did is I got a, an association with the research centre. At the time there wasn't one for social care, but I did start working with our public health research centre decipher. And from them I learned an awful lot really about about um, about evaluation methods, getting involved with some l large teams doing really large scale and ambitious studies, such as I couldn't possibly have done on my own, but I learned the ropes by working alongside others in teams, which is what research centres do tend to offer. Nowadays, we do have in my university uh, research centres for both adult social care and children's social care with a lot of funded projects going on. So there's great opportunities there or in your more local universities in other, part, in other parts of Wales um, to really get good experience of working on funded research projects, which tend to be a larger and more ambitious with a bit of a range of methods.